This question, whether a brain scan could ever truly plumb someone's mind if they were out to defeat it, is central to whether neuroscience will ever have a role in the courtroom in making judgments about individuals. But the insights of neuroscience into the teenage brain do help explain why young people in general can engage in foolish and dangerous acts. We saw from Jay Geed's studies that a brain like Jimmy's is likely still to be incompletely wired up. From Bea Luna that a teenage brain is unready for the prep work needed to avoid making split-second mistakes, especially in emotionally charged situations. And from Larry Steinberg, that reward centers in the teenage brain can be put into high gear when friends are around. All of which raises the question. Are we in danger of saying that, he, as far as culpability is concerned, that he, he's not really guilty, his brain made him do it? Um, yeah, and I, I, I think that's one of the more important sort of debates about how neuroscience can inform the law that you don't want to get to the level of making the separation of my brain made me do it and not me. That's why I'm always saying it should never be the critical aspect of the law, which is an ethical issue. It should just be an informative piece as many other informative pieces might be. So I don't think that we can sort of use it as an excuse to not be accountable, but I think it can influence what we do moving forward, what sort of environment they should be in um, that keeps society safe, um, but that the probably worst imaginable would be to um, put them in with other people that are older and, and criminals because this is a time when the brain is looking for peers and modeling to know mm -hmm. what to do.